I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mastering Organic Synthesis, where every episode we figure out the multi-step synthetic route to achieve long chemical transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could figure out the multi-step synthetic route to figure out this transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another problem to solve for next month's video. This multi-step synthesis relies on your knowledge from just sophomore level organic chemistry. Using just those transformations through a series of multi step sequences, you can achieve an elongation of a carbon chain, a cyclization, and an addition of more carbons, as well as several functional group transformations. The pathway that I figured out was first to add an organolithium species to do an addition at this carbonyl carbon. When you have these alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds, remember that we can perform what are called Michael additions at either the 1-4 position or the 1-2 position. In order to achieve that 1-2 position, as opposed to the 1-4 position, we need to use an organolithium species. So something like n buley which just means that you have a linear carbon chain that is four carbons. So for example, one, two, three, four, and then the lithium reagent, this is what's called n buley And that is step one, and following acidic workup, we can turn this into an alcohol. So we were going to add this butyl group at this carbonyl carbon position leaving the alkene intact. So the product of that transformation is going to be that alkene. Now we have turned that carbonyl oxygen into an alcohol, and then you have a four-membered linear chain, one, two, three, four. The next step is we can reform a carbonyl ketone at this position by using an oxidizing reagent. The one that I most often use is going to be DMP because I don't think it will react with this alkene. So DMP will allow me to turn that alcohol back into a ketone and leaving this four-membered carbon chain here. So what we've done is extended the carbon chain and reformed the ketone. And now from here, we can do another Michael addition, this time at the 1-4 position, so this terminal carbon of the alkene, if we take a diester species, an NaH. So NaH is going to allow us to deprotonate the alpha carbon of a diester. So if we have this diester species, then we can deprotonate this alpha carbon position, making it a good Michael donor to react with this Michael acceptor. So taking these two, reacting them to form the Michael donor or the enolate species at this carbon position, and then reacting it with our alkene at this position allows us to create a new diester. And the product of that transformation is going to be the ester here. Remember we have that carbon with our other ester on this side. So that is this molecule, and now it is attached at this carbon. So it will be attached at that position, which means the rest of the molecule remains unchanged, where we still now have our four-member chain. And all we have done is added this diester to this carbon, which was this carbon previously. And then from here, we can do a Dieckmann cyclization because we have this diester species and a carbonyl carbon, which can be attacked via nucleophilic acyl substitution, and we can deprotonate this alpha carbon hydrogen using a base like sodium ethoxide. So when we do that, we would deprotonate th this, form an enolate, which would subsequently attack here, and that's gonna be a cyclization process. And that cyclization process is called the Dieckmann cyclization. And the product of that transformation is going to close this ring. So from here, we end up with most of our final products. We end up with our six-membered ring, which has two ketones on it. We also still have our four carbon chain, which is how we got this side over here. The only thing that's extra from here all the way to our product is going to be we still have an ester at this position. So this ester needs to be removed in the final step to get to our final product. And the way that we remove that ester to get to our final product is first adding a strong base like sodium hydroxide and then subsequently working it up with an acid like H3O plus in the presence of water and also in the presence of heat would allow us to get to our final product. So to remove this ester, these were the conditions that got us to our final product. So remember, the first step is the addition of the butyl lithium group to do a 1-2 Michael addition, followed by reoxidizing the alcohol to a ketone, followed by a 1-4 Michael addition with a diester species, subsequent Dieckmann cyclization to form the six-membered ring, and then removing the ester group 
using this workup condition. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. For next month's video, I'd love to see if you could figure out the total synthetic route for this chemical transformation. If you enjoy these videos, remember that I publish two additional videos a month exclusively for members. You can check out the link down below. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss another video, and I'll see you next time.